Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Tortier. That's right, the culinary school I attended was very close to the Canadian border. And sometimes we would cross that border in search of two things. Neither of which was this amazing meat pie. Okay, it was actually beer and a very specific type of dance performance. But nevertheless, I did enjoy tortier on numerous occasions. And since it is a very traditional French-Canadian holiday dish, I thought the timing was perfect to show you how to put one of these together. And to get started with that, we're going to need some kind of pie dough, which I'm going to go through very quickly, since we've done this in like half a dozen videos. So in a food processor, I have some all-purpose flour, which I'm going to combine with a spoon of salt and two sticks of butter that I've cut up and placed in the freezer so that it's very, very cold and very hard. And what I'm going to do is blitz that on and off for about a half a minute or so, or until our butter's been reduced to the size of peas, give or take. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and drizzle in some nice cold fresh water that we spiked with a little bit of white vinegar. And then we'll go ahead and pulse that on and off until our mixture basically resembles very coarse breadcrumbs. Okay, we don't want to do this until it comes together in a dough ball. That's too far. And by the way, this is in real time, so it's not going to take long. And if this mixture contains enough moisture, you should be able to press some together and it should hold together like this. All right, let me give you a better look at that. Okay, can you see that? That's perfect. And then what we'll do once that's happened is go ahead and transfer this onto our work surface and basically press it together into a lump of dough. And the reason this works so much better is if you wait for the dough ball to come together in the food processor, it can get overworked. So this way we're accomplishing the same thing without overmixing. And by avoiding that, we're hopefully gonna end up with a very tender and very flaky crust. And then once all that's been pressed together, we'll go ahead and wrap that in plastic and pop it in the fridge for at least one hour or until we're ready to use it. All right, as far as workability goes, cold pie dough is always much, much easier than warm pie dough. So we'll pop that in the fridge and move on to our herb and spice blend. So into this bowl, we're gonna combine some kosher salt, some freshly ground black pepper, some dried sage, some dried thyme, some cinnamon, some ground ginger, some freshly grated nutmeg, some allspice, some dry mustard, and some ground clove. And then last but not least, everybody's favorite, a little bit of cayenne, which I don't think they add in Quebec, but that's okay. We're allowed to. We are, after all, the mayor of our tortier. And then once we have that together, we can go ahead and start cooking, which will begin by adding some diced onions to some butter over medium heat, along with a pinch of salt. And we'll go ahead and cook those stirring. And we usually just do this until the onions soften and turn translucent, but not this time. We're actually gonna cook these over medium until they turn to a nice golden brown. Okay, so we're gonna get a little more color on them than usual. And then while our onions are cooking, simultaneously, we're also gonna boil a peeled quartered potato in some salted water until very tender. And as usual, we'll be testing for doneness by giving it the old polka polka with a knife. But once tender, instead of draining this, We'll actually use a strainer to scoop these potatoes out into a bowl because we need to reserve this cooking liquid. Repeat, do not throw away the potato water. And you'll see why momentarily. And then what we'll do while our potatoes are hot is mash them up and then simply reserve those until needed, which is going to be in about 45 minutes to an hour. And at this point, we'll go back and check our onions, which like I said, we want to cook to a beautiful golden brown. So those are looking just about right. And at this point, we can go ahead and add some crushed garlic, as well as some finely diced celery, and our already prepped holiday spice blend. And we'll go ahead and stir that in and cook this for about one minute. All right, that's just going to wake up the spices and infuse that butter with all these wonderful flavors. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and add whatever meat we're using, which for me is equal parts ground pork and ground beef. Okay, veal is also a very popular choice. And then remember when I told you to save that potato water? That's because we're going to add a couple ladles of it here. And I'm not measuring exactly, but that's probably about three quarters of a cup. And then what we're going to want to do is take a completely normally sized wooden spoon and sort of mix and mash this all together. And what that potato water is going to do is help us turn this into a paste. All right, we do not want chunks of meat here. All right, we want something that has a very fine texture. So we'll go ahead and work that over with our spoon until, like I said, we've achieved a paste-like texture. And then all we're gonna do is let this cook on medium, stirring occasionally, for about 45 minutes or so, 
or until our meat is nice and tender and most of the liquid is evaporated. And by the way, as this cooks, if you want to spoon off some of that fat that pools at the top, feel free. I did a little bit, but we do need some of that to keep this nice and moist and succulent. So you be the judge. But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook that for about 45 minutes or so until our meat gets nice and tender and extremely paste-like. And as I said, most of that liquid gets evaporated. All right, we don't want the mixture to get super dry. It should stay relatively moist and juicy. But if we drag our spoon across the bottom, that space should not fill in quickly with liquid. And if it does, just raise your heat up a little bit and cook it a little more. And conversely, if it dries out too quick, just go ahead and add another splash of your potato water. And then what we'll do once we think our mixtures cook long enough is go ahead and add and stir in our potato, which along with that natural sticky goodness from the meat is what's going to hold our pie together. So we'll go ahead and stir that in until combined, at which point we're going to turn off our heat and let this cool down to room temp. Or at least that's what my French Canadian friends insist on. I'm not sure what happens if you make the pie with this mixture still hot. And if you want to take a chance, go for it. But I'm going to go ahead and let mine cool. And once it does, we are ready to fill our crust, which is our next and almost last step. So on a flour surface, I'm going to go ahead and roll out half our dough to make the bottom crust. And I say half, but it's really closer to like 55 or 60% of it. Since for a deep dish pie, we do need a little more dough for the bottom than the top. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and roll that out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And then we will roll that up on our pin to make it easier to transfer into our dish. And we'll go ahead and make sure that's nicely settled in. And we have plenty of dough here, so don't stretch it out across the bottom. All right, you always want to sort of adjust it down from the sides. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and roll out the rest of the dough for the top. And once the top crust is done, we're going to have to make some sort of vents, which you can just do by making some slashes with a knife. But I'm actually going to take one of these decorative star-shaped cutters and press out a nice festive-looking hole from the center. And that will allow steam to escape so our pie doesn't explode. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and transfer in our filling, making sure to pack it down pretty good, as well as smooth out the top. And then once our filling's in before we put the top crust on, we'll want to go around and paint the edge with some egg wash, which is just one large egg beaten with a tablespoon of water. And we'll go ahead and apply that all the way around before placing our dough on top, hopefully centering our vent if we made one. And if you didn't, like I said, you could just make some slashes with your knife. And then what we'll do once we've gone around pressing that together is trim off the excess dough. Which instead of doing across the top edge of the dish, which we sometimes do, I'm actually going to angle the knife and go around the bottom rim of the dish so that I have plenty of dough to crimp together. Alright, for this pie I want a nice big thick crust to pair with all that nice big thick meat. And then once that's trimmed, we'll go ahead and crimp the edge. Which as you can see is done simply by pressing one finger in between two fingers going all the way around, which is not only the easiest way to crimp, it also, in my opinion, makes one of the best looking edges. And then we'll finish this up by egg washing it all over, including and especially our crimping. And that's it. Once our pie's been egg washed, it's ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about an hour or until beautifully browned and hopefully looking very close to something like this. Oh yeah. That is one handsome looking tortier. And I'd love to tell you we could eat it right now, but it is highly recommended you let this cool down. All right, the consensus is that room temp's the best, or maybe just slightly, slightly warm. But for whatever reason, this is rarely served piping hot, probably because it's harder to taste and may actually crumble apart. So we really should let this cool down. But I was losing light, not to mention starving. So I took my chances cutting a slice while it was still pretty warm. And I'm happy to report it actually worked out pretty well. And after just a few seconds of pushing things back in place, I ended up with a pretty nice looking slice. And I know what you're thinking. There's no way the first one came out that good. You probably cut three or four and used the nicest one. Well, check it out. Take that, skeptics. But anyway, the point is let it cool. The texture will set up a lot better. And while some folks like to serve this with beef gravy, or believe it or not, ketchup, I feel that if properly made, you really don't need anything. That filling is just so meaty and savory and beautifully scented with all those warm holiday spices. Just extremely flavorful and satisfying. Of course, having said that, 
I never remember turning down gravy. So I guess if someone offered, I would try it. But this is perfectly scrumptious as is. And not to brag, but that crust came out absolutely perfect. Which reminds me to remind you, make sure you bake this long enough until it's nicely browned. Okay, we really do need that bottom crust to turn golden. And this one certainly did. But anyway, that's it. My take on Tortier. I really did enjoy everything about this, as well as the memories it brought back of my trips to Montreal during culinary school. And I know I still have to do a poutine video. But anyway, in the meantime, whether it's for a holiday celebration or not, I really do hope you give this amazing meat pie a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.